I've never jumped out of an airplane. I always figured that jumping out of a perfectly good airplane was kind of silly, but at the same point in time, I've stood right up on the edge of a giant canyon. I have been scuba diving. I have flown in single engine planes. I have uh, jumped off zip lining across a huge canyon and, and done things that many people over time have died doing. I didn't have any fear. I just was logical. I just did the right things. I was not filled with care in the sense of being careful, but at the same point, I just tried to do everything wisely. Being afraid to live steals away your life. And I think that we have to understand that we can be wise and not live in fear. We can do the right things and yet not be afraid. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about fear and a few other things that surround the concept of fear. So reading from the book of Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 through 9, Joshua writes, speaking for the Lord, being inspired, only be thou strong and very courageous, not just a little bit courageous, but very courageous. And strong doesn't have anything to do with your deodorant. It has to do with the idea of being willing to put forth the effort. Be thou strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Now this is Old Testament, so right now I want to remind you that in the New Testament, your main law is involved in believing on Jesus Christ. Do not turn from it. Turn not to the left, turn not to the right, away from believing on Jesus Christ. He is your Savior. Don't let what happens to you, don't let your circumstances, don't let what happens to your family, friends, and loved ones, anything turn you aside. Do not turn from God in any way, to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper. Now, I think that's interesting, because here, doing God's law, following his commandments, it doesn't say there that you can have salvation. I'm concerned for your salvation. I want you to not turn from believing on Jesus Christ no matter what happens, no matter what goes wrong. You can't turn away. You just have to continue to march on in your faith. But here, it doesn't say anything about turning away that you may be saved. He says, don't turn from God's law that you may prosper in whithersoever you goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all. I find it interesting, because see, for salvation, you have to do all the law. You can't miss anything. You can't mess up even once. And that's why the law really doesn't apply for our eternal life, because every single one of us constantly messes up. And so, faith in Jesus is salvation to do according to all that is written thereof, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Hmm, interesting. Doing what God tells us to do helps us to be prosperous. Then you shall have good success. Doing what God tells us to do helps us to be successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. And I think we have trouble right now with a lot of people being afraid. They're afraid of what's going to happen in our country. They're afraid of what's going to happen in their lives. They're afraid of what's going to happen in their jobs. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. You know, life can be tough. God wants us to be 
strong, and courageous. So Ephesians 6.10 says, now this is New Testament. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You see, it says be strong in the Lord. I used to be pretty strong. I did some weight lifting. I used to, if I was cutting down a tree, I'd just pick up a big log and just lift it up. I can't do it anymore. I used to be able to do a lot of things, and, and many of you are the same way. You used to have some physical strength, but your physical strength is no longer strong. Your physical strength is no longer like it used to be. And so, emotionally, I used to be pretty stable. I think as we get older, things bother us more. I know a lot of the older people that I've <coughs> talked with, stuff just seems to really trouble them. And my own emotional stability, I used to remember everything. I used to be able to be typing something, thinking about something else, and talking to somebody at the same time. Now I have trouble just doing one thing at the same time <laughs> as existing. So my strength, physically, mentally, emotionally, it's not what it used to be. But I'm still strong in the Lord. And that's the only way we can really make it. We have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Our strength does nothing but fade. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life wherein to thou art called. I mean, you stop and think. Here God is, Old Testament and New Testament, saying that we need to be strong. Old Testament and New Testament telling us that we need to have courage. Old Testament, New Testament indicating that we have to fight. This is a fight. Life is a fight. Wow. Don't know if you ever thought about that like that, but we're supposed to be fighting right now. And it seems that most Christians just think we're supposed to just kind of lay back and just let everything happen. We're supposed to be fighting a hidden enemy. We have something that we're facing. And in fact, in addition to fighting, which this is a form of fighting, Ephesians 6.12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Interesting, spiritual wickedness in high places. There's been a lot of wickedness in high places and probably will continue to be a lot of wickedness in high places as time goes by. But we have to wrestle. When I lived in Florida for a while, wrestlers would come in on Miami Beach into this restaurant. And I met them. And some of them were pretty beat up. I mean, they would have cuts that were sewn up. But the wrestling that they were doing was scripted. You knew ahead of time who was going to win. And, and they tried not to terribly hurt each other. But some of the, what people would call WWE, the, the wrestling matches, some things are scripted. It's entertainment that people enjoy watching. And so it's laid out what's going to happen, but that doesn't mean that they're not actually wrestling and that they're not actually fighting and that somebody might not get hurt. It does happen. But at the same point in time, we're not fake wrestling at all. We are wrestling against a hidden enemy, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And those rulers of darkness are trying to mess up your life. They're trying to mess up your relationships. They're trying to mess up your jobs, everything about you. They're trying to mess up your kids. They're trying to mess up our country. And we're in a battle. And that battle is not going to end until Jesus returns. But that doesn't mean we give up. We continue to fight. How do you fight spiritually? You've got to read your Bible. You've got to listen. You've got to pray. You have to grow in the Lord. You have to learn to be strong. You've got to learn to trust him. You have to gather together. I mean, here we are gathering together in a time where a lot of churches and places have folded up. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to gather. 
In other countries, there's so many people who do not even have an opportunity to read God's word or know what God has even said to them. For that, we're very blessed. So we are wrestling, we are fighting, we need to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Next, keeping the law. It's not going to help us to be saved, as I said earlier, but it's there for our good. Only faith in Jesus can bring you salvation. Only faith in Jesus can wash away your sin. He's the only one that can do it. When you believe that he died on the cross for your sin and has risen from the dead, he washes you clean. And at the same point in time, that doesn't dismiss the fact that God wants us to do the right thing. And his laws aren't grievous. And so there's so many there. There's so many things in the Bible about how you're supposed to interact with each other. Even how somebody is, who is sick is supposed to interact. I find it interesting that people who are sick with diseases that were very communicable, they were supposed to stand afar off and supposed to say, hey, I've got the disease. They're not supposed to walk up to you. And if you've got the COVID disease, you're not supposed to walk right up close to somebody. You're supposed to stay away. And, and I find it very interesting that there's laws in, in the Bible about how those people who are sick are supposed to stay away, even to the point of shouting, I've got it. <laughs> interesting. The sick are supposed to protect the not sick. I find that interesting. The not sick are not commanded to try and pay attention to stay away from anybody who is sick. It's the opposite way around for the command. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21. Lay up the words of the Lord for the law in your heart and in your soul. Bind them for a sign on your hands that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. I find that very interesting. There are groups of Jews who take parts of the Torah and it's written on little pieces of paper and they're put inside of little leather boxes, little black leather boxes. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they strap one, a box onto their left hand and maybe you've seen some pictures of somebody with this black box on their head it's strapped onto their head and it's, it's not a light for looking down in caves or anything. It's a, it's a black box that literally contains parts of the Torah, parts of the word of God, because they literally are trying to follow this rule, to take the word of God and have it on their hand, have it on their forehead, that the word of God is the thing that's supposed to be there. I find it interesting that it's on your hand and in your forehead because the 666 is going to be in your hand and, or in your forehead. But here, take God's law and, in other words, keep it in your mind. Teach God's law to your children. Wow. What happens to the next generation if you just let them run wild? If you don't tell them to do the right thing? If you don't teach them to be kind? If you don't teach them what's good and what's wrong and what's right? Teach them to your children. Speak of them when you're in your house, when you're walking by the way, when you're lying down, when you're rising up. You should have the word of God in your mouth all the time. Write them upon your doorposts. That's interesting. Write them upon the doorposts of your house, upon your gates, and all of this, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children. How interesting. Again, it wasn't that you may be saved. It was that things would go well for you, that you can live long, that you can prosper. You know, live long and prosper. When, when we were walking along saying hi to people and somebody would reach out their hand to me back several months ago, sometimes it depended on who it was, I would shake their hand. But if it was somebody I didn't know very well, I would go like this and they would laugh. I would say, you know, live long and prosper. Well, live long and prosper, Spock used to do that, Star Trek. And uh, at the same point in time, in order to live long and prosper, we're supposed to do whatever God told us to do. That's a blessing. God promises that he will help us. 
I hope I'm going to get a handout. $600 coming this time from the government. Maybe I'm going to get another handout later on because people wanted that to be $2,000. I don't know if it will be. I've been reading that some people might not get the $600 if they don't get it in the next week or two. I forget how, how that came out, but you, you know what we need? God doesn't hand out to us anything other than salvation, but salvation comes because of faith. The handout comes just because we're here. And this is a cliche, but instead of giving people a handout, what do they need? A hand up, right? So God promises to help us, not to just hand out. He promises to bless us. If we follow his law, if we do these rules, if we follow these things, he blesses us. And so instead of just giving us a handout, I can use the handout. You can all use the handout at this time. Things have been kind of hard, especially with the virus, people losing their jobs and people, you know, my goodness, the whole restaurant industry has just been devastated. All those people working as servers and stuff, I mean, no tips coming in, no job at all. It's really tough. They can use some help. Unfortunately, some people, all they want is a handout over and over again. And God just wants to give everybody a hand up. Psalm 35, 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified. He has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Wow. God takes pleasure when you prosper. That's pretty cool. Next verse is the same kind of concept. Jeremiah 32, 41. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. God wants to do good for you. He wants things to go well for you. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants, Deuteronomy 16, 15, just the dark print, the Lord thy God will bless you in all your increase and in the works of your hands. Right there's the promise. He's going to bless you. He rejoices in all of the work you do. He's going to help you to increase. But what do you have to do? It's the works of your hands. So you go out and you do your best to work and God blesses you. You plant your field and God provides the increase. You spend the money or you take the time or you put in the effort and God helps to make it all come together so that it all produces a blessing for you. He provides you with that hand up, not just a hand out. What a wonderful blessing. Deuteronomy 7, 13. The Lord will love you and bless you and multiply you. Deuteronomy 28, 8 and 9. The Lord will command the blessing upon you. He commands your job to go well if you follow according to his will and word. He commands your crops to grow. He commands your vegetables to produce. I had a tomato plant this year. Didn't grow any tomatoes until just before it froze. It just, it grew up, it was green, it had some flowers on it, not a single tomato. All the other plants produced, this one didn't. Just, just shortly before it froze, it started producing a tomato tree. And then, I mean, I don't think we ate anything off of it. Some people's work just seems like nothing ever goes right. Do what God says, pray about it. I'd even challenge the Lord. If you're following God's will, if you're believing on Jesus for your salvation, if you're doing your best to live according to his law, and in your heart and in your mind you're putting forth an effort and things just aren't working out for you, be bold. Be like, be like Moses. Say, Lord, you promised me you told me right here in your word that you were going to bless me and I'm doing my best and I'm expecting you to bless me. I can remember that one time when one of our children was sick and I had prayed and it just seemed like he wasn't getting better. And in, the, in the hospital, everything wrong. And I was praying and no matter what I did, I took my Bible and I threw it on the floor and I stood on it and I prayed and I said, I'm standing on your word. You told me. 
I was bold to God. And I think it's okay for us to be bold to God. If it's not working out and you're doing what God said, don't be afraid to say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm believing your word. I'm expecting you to keep what you said you're going to do. Hey, Moses talked to him like that. <laughs> you may not be Moses, but it's okay. It, tell the truth. Let God know. Get his attention. You need to do that because he wants to bless you. Deuteronomy 28, 8 and 9 says, He will command the blessing upon you in all that you set your hands unto. He will bless you. Verse 9, The Lord will establish, establish you. There and at the end of verse 9, If you will keep his commandments and walk in his ways. God's made this promise. And you can trust him. Sometimes, especially now, isolated, we feel alone. Who's there? Can't even get out. Some people, especially if you have lung problems. We've got some people here from church who have COPD, who have asthma, different things like that. Even just getting a cold can threaten their lives, let alone catching the flu or some other disease. These people who have these lung troubles, they really feel isolated and alone because they can't, they can't go out and do anything. But they're really not alone. You may feel like you're alone, but you're not. <laughs> when, I was, when I was young, I was afraid to be alone. I woke up one day and I was probably, I'm gonna say maybe six years old. And I got out of bed and I, I've never liked to sleep in, I, I had my underwear on in bed. And I got out of bed and I looked around, I didn't see anybody in my house. And I called to my mom, I didn't see anybody. I looked out the window, and the car and the truck were gone. And then I started hearing noises. Oh, what's here, what's happened? I don't know where they are, what's going on? And I ended up taking a chair out and sitting in my underwear in the middle of the front yard because I was afraid because I was alone. Now it turned out my mom had just driven down the road, picked up something to eat for breakfast, and, had, and was driving back. She was only gone maybe for five minutes. But she thought I would stay asleep, and I didn't. It's not fun to be alone. But if you're a Christian, you're not alone. You're never alone. The Lord is with you. You also have family, friends a church family that loves you, that will pray for you. But most of all, you have the Lord. Psalm 91, 5 through 7. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, for the arrow that flies by day. Don't have too many arrows flying, but we do have bullets flying. We shall not be afraid of the terrorists, of the bullets, the pestilence, you know what a pestilence is, it's like a disease. Shall not be afraid of the, of the terror, the arrow that flieth by day, the pestilence that walks in the darkness, the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, and it's not going to come nigh thee. You got like 400,000 people in America. People who may have died from this disease. You just do your job, you take your precautions, and you say, it's not going to happen to me. Because I'm doing, my, I'm doing my job, I'm doing the right thing, I'm praying, I'm trusting God, I'm following after his word, and I'm believing, and I'm not going to let it terrify me. I am going to do the right thing. Ezekiel 2, 6 through 7. You shall not be afraid of them, nor of their words. Though briars and thorns are with thee. Sometimes if I'm listening to politicians, I think it's briars and thorns. All I'm doing is, is hearing from briars and thorns. Thou shalt, thou dost dwell among scorpions. Yep. We're dwelling amongst scorpions. I don't care which side of the aisle they're on. They're, 
a whole bunch of scorpions. Doesn't matter whether they're Republicans or Democrats, just a whole bunch of scorpions out there, briars and thorns. Be not afraid of their words. Hmm. Be not afraid of their words. Don't be dismayed of the way they look at you. Don't be dismayed of their looks. Though they be a rebellious house, thou shalt speak my words unto them. And whether they hear or whether they forbear, doesn't really matter. They are rebellious. That's it. They are most rebellious. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So no matter what anybody's doing in the world, no matter what's going wrong, no matter what the trouble is, doesn't matter, God has promised, he will never leave thee, he will never forsake thee. He is going to be with you always. Our enemies are many. Age is an enemy. Death is, a is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. All of these things that we struggle with, disease is our enemy. We live in a world where the world is full of liars and thieves. Hasn't changed much over the centuries. Years ago, the world was filled with liars and thieves. We just got more people living in the world, so you got more liars and thieves. And you just have to understand, they're there, but you got the Lord, and he is with you, and he will help you, and he will bless you. Joshua 10, 25 through 26. Joshua said, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, be strong and courageous. Wow, coming right on. And Joshua says, this is what the Lord will do to all of your enemies that you are going to fight. What is God going to end up doing to all of your enemies? Joshua struck and killed the kings and hung them on five trees. These kings that had come against the people of the Lord, Joshua said, you got enemies? Here's what God's going to do to your enemies. I'll show you what he'll do. He cut these guys' heads off and hung them up on the trees. That's what God is going to do to every one of your enemies. He's going, to, he's going to do to sickness. He's going to cut it off by the head and hang it up. What's he going to do to age? He's going to cut it off and he's going to hang it up. Every disease, every problem, every struggle, all the helplessness, all the homelessness, all the starvation in the world, God's going to cut it all off and he's going to hang it all up. Joshua hung them up on the trees and left them hang there. Second Timothy 1.7 God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. I think we forget that sometime. Sound mind. Not the, power, not the spirit of fear, but a spirit of sound mind. We have to be wise. How we react, what we think. We're in a big fight, we gotta keep fighting. We're in a big wrestling match, we gotta continue to wrestle. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 through 27. He must reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. God is going to slay death and hang it up never to die again. John eleven twenty six, 26, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, Jesus says, will never face that eternal death. Even if we face death here in this world, we won't face that eternal death. Fear not. Jesus is coming soon. Fear not. No matter how bad it gets, I've said it in years past, Cheer up, saints, it's going to get worse, but it's okay. Cheer up. You have a better life coming. You have an eternal life of blessing coming. And no matter what takes place today or tomorrow, until Jesus returns, regardless of how bad it is, 
Just keep on fighting the good fight of faith and keep on believing. Keep on being strong and being courageous and do the right thing. God will bless you and your faith in Christ will bring you eternal life. Amen? If you've never prayed and received Jesus Christ as Savior, now's the time to do it. Just pray this prayer with me. And if you believe what you're saying with your mouth, then God will hear your cry. He'll answer your prayers. He'll forgive your sins and give you a new life. Just pray and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. I know he died on the cross for me. I believe he came back from the dead. I pray you'd come into my life. Forgive my sins. I receive Jesus as my Savior. And I give my life to you. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.